let me start off by telling you why we're giving this information away for free. This is one piece of the puzzle, getting business, especially where we're going into a down market. Aaron and I both started just like all of you in a position where we had to go seek information. A lot of times we had to pay for it. I was introduced to Aaron by some other agents, different states, and I was looking for guidance. In one conversation, Aaron changed the way that I was thinking, and, and that in turn changed the whole trajectory of how I looked at my life and my business. So I hope you're all excited. I'm gonna let Aaron take it away. How to take one listing every single day, change your life. Percent Appreciate it, Sohil. I appreciate everybody taking the time to uh, be with us here today. Yeah. And what's really true for me is I have a confession to make. This group seems pretty inviting. I feel comfortable that I can share with you guys. So there was an actual time in my life where I used to sit in a vacant house with cookies that I had made and fucking waited for people to show up. I know, I'm not proud of that. There was also a time in my life when I used to wear my name tag on my fucking shirt and stomp around my local grocery store, smiling at everybody in hopes that someone would say, oh my God, I was actually thinking about buying and selling real estate. I don't know anybody who's a real estate agent, my sister, my cousin, my brother, nobody. And because you have that little name tag, Right there, you're the one that's going to get the business. I know, like I shared with you, I'm not proud of that. And this one, this one kind of stings the most, but again, I feel comfortable with you guys that I can share. I used to put my face on yard signs like this. hallucinating that someone would say, oh my God, I have to list my home with him. Now, in all seriousness, guys, what I am aware of is that our marketplace and the marketplaces that you guys sell real estate in have changed dramatically. So whatever tools and techniques that you were using previously, let's say between 2020 and May, April, May of 2022, they're not going to be as effective as efficient because we went from a marketplace that had 6 million transactions in a calendar year to projected this year, 3.8 million. Drop in the chat if you've noticed there's been a shrinking of volume. Drop in the chat if you've noticed that in your geographic area and put where you're from. Lines out the door, 100 people waiting to get into an open house. And now you're there all by yourself. Safe to say things have changed a little bit. We went from multiple, 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 multiple offers, right? 30 offers. I remember looking at my wife being like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> 30, 40, 50 offers. People removing financing contingencies, removing appraisal contingencies, bringing me pies, buyer's agents were in hopes that I would select their offer. So now you're like, sit before you go to bed at night, pray to the real estate gods. Oh, God damn it. And that's normal and natural, guys, because there's seasons and business, there's seasons in life. What precedes fall is always winter. There's no reason to get freaked out about it. That whatever it is you were doing between 2020 and 2022 is not producing the same results. Good. I see Justin. I see the queen in the north. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. From Corrado. Aware. Yes, sir. I like the sir piece. Way to go, Jose. Meaning who can get to the individual the fastest. Who can get the client on the phone the quickest would get the, op the deal to being a skill-based environment. Whoever's the most skilled is gonna procure the business. Anybody notice that on those listing appointments you're going on, you're competing with more people? Yeah, every single one. Even your past clients, Pam. <laughs> There's less opportunities and more people chasing them. Okay, so the decisions that you make around either deciding to stay exactly the same and do exactly what you were doing previously, which I understand, 
Because money has an addictive quality and because of it, we get addicted to the way that we receive it. So the reason you gravitate towards things that worked in the past is because it makes you feel safe. But it doesn't mean it's going to work because the environment has shifted and changed. Because we've moved from an abundance of leads to a shortage well, to, to less, I won't call it a shortage, to less, 6 million to 3.8 is a big difference, right? We have to be very, very clear around what's going on up here and around skills and having a very clear mental map if we want to continue to get our unfair share. Who in here is interested in their unfair share besides me? 100%. I want people to look and be like, damn, that's unfair. Everything is working. It's out. not. Because write this down. All rewards must be earned. All rewards must be earned. I'd love to be able to outsource push-ups to the Philippines and I get diesel. Wouldn't that be great, Jose? That'd be dope. I'd love to be able to have somebody else read and I get the fucking benefit. <laughs> That's not the way it works. Okay? So your mindset and your skills will allow you to outperform the marketplace. Now, how do I know that this is true? How can I speak to this with conviction? The way I know the sky is blue and the grass is green. So in 2007, I'm selling real estate in the University of Florida or in Gainesville, Florida, after graduating from the University of Florida. I'm on track to do about 60 transactions that year, just pounding it out. Dialing for dollars, smiling, dialing, and making a piling. And I get a phone call. And I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you've ever had an experience where you know you can feel something's off before you even actually know that it's off. Anybody had that experience before? So I had that feeling when this phone rang because it was my dad. And it's not that it would be weird that he was calling me because I have a good relationship with him. It's just weird that he would be calling me at that time of the day, like at 830 in the morning. So I stopped prospecting, I pick up the phone and he proceeds to tell me that my mom had a very serious health event that required my immediate attention. He suggested that I stop what I'm doing and come back home immediately, which is a five, six hour drive. And that's exactly what I did. And within a week, because of the severity of that situation, it required all hands on deck. I shut down my business. I gave away all the listings, gave away all the pendings and I started over from scratch. <clears throat> And then 2008 happened. I gave away all That's pretty fun. Anybody on this call was around in 2008 selling real estate? Okay. Just me and Sohail, looks like. Not what we're experiencing now. What we're experiencing now is a little hiccup. That was like an implosion. First year, 17 transactions while everything's collapsing. Second year, 50. 2010, 75. 2011, 89. 2012, 98, 2013, 100. Took me four year, more years to get to 200 while everybody else is becoming a BMW. They're bitching, moaning, and whining. They're hoping and wishing and praying that interest rates change so I can make some money. I didn't read out of a book because I thought it was cute. I'm unlike most of these coaches. I've actually sold real estate before. <laughs> In high volume for an extended period of time. In marketplaces that are great, in marketplaces that are terrible. This is like in the middle. And I believe, I truly do, guys, with all of my being, that every single person in this room with the right skills, the right mindset, and the right approach can accomplish anything that I've done, if not more. So what I'm going to do for the next maybe 30, 40 minutes is I'm going to share with you those mental maps ways of thinking. Because one of the best things you can get from a teacher, mentor, or coach, which is just somebody who's perhaps a little bit further down the path than you are, is access to the way that they think. Because the way that they think allows them to do what they do. So that way you can deal with, instead of just resulting to becoming a BMW, you can actually deal with what's happening in the marketplace. I'm going to share my screen as well. I'm going to pull up this slide deck. So as we talk, we can talk about it and look at it together as a team. So if you want to set one appointment a day, that's going, to change, that's going to help you with all of the problems that you have in your life, guys. If you have a, a financial problem right now, set one appointment a day. It disappears. You have a mindset problem right now, set one appointment a day. It disappears. Okay? 
you're considering doing something else right now. Set one appointment a day and all this thing, all those problems disappear. But if you want to set one appointment a day, the mindset needs to be as I prospect for appointments, not contacts. I prospect for appointments, not contacts. A lot of you guys get caught up into contactitis. How many people besides me have get caught, caught up in contactitis? 25, 30 contacts a day. Yes, I understand that volume, contacts equals contracts. I understand that. At the same time, if your intention is to set appointments, it's different than just making contacts. The other thing I want to stress to you guys is you have to come from a place of contribution, guys. A lot of you guys lead with authority or you attempt to lead with authority. I understand why you do this because you were trained by people who do this. At the same time, it's not attractive. You'll say things like, are you familiar, Pam, with the techniques that I use to sell homes? Can you imagine if you went to the baker Corrado and he's like, hey, uh, are you familiar with the way I make bagels? You'd be like, is this guy serious right now? Right? While your home was on the market, I sold. Who's that about, guys? You. The magical techniques that I use. Hey, here's a secret. You ready? We all use the same techniques. Same photographers, same pictures, same MLS. So stop coming from a place of, con uh, of kind of trying to take and with authority and instead come from a place of contribution. How can I help? How can I serve? Right? If that's your driving question, it'll infuse and change the conversations that you're having with people. Like, listen, Pam, my job's to help you. It's never to talk to you to do anything. I guess I'm curious when you had originally put this home on the market, it's lovely. It's in a great location. I don't need to tell you that. Was there any particular reason, Almo, you were even considering selling it? Who's that about? Them, not you, right? I'm wondering, because my job is to help you. It's never to talk to you to do anything. Is it an option for you to maybe not sell this home and still accomplish your goals and objectives? Like maybe rent it out, or is that not something that you want to do? Time frame wise let's say that you knew that if you made a decision to wait, it could end up affecting how much you can get. Would you still want to wait, or would you want to move your timeline up? What's up, Ramon? You see, all of those questions are about how you can serve, how you can help, not leading from a place of contribution, excuse me, leading from a place of significance or trying to be like authority, like I'm so cool, right? Look at me, look at me. Try to find out how you can add value to their situation, not how you can set an appointment. What's their dynamic, right? Where do they need, where do they need help and assistance? Okay. And here's a key phrase. You can get whatever you want in life if you help enough people get what they want. Yeah, that's old Zig Ziglar right there. And it's true. It's just as true when he said it however many years ago as it is today. Stop making yourself the main focus, but prospect for appointments, not contacts. And the what gets you to an appointment is to demonstrate. They want to know how much am I going to get? How much is it going to cost? And can you help me? They, and they don't care about the other two until they know that you care about them. And the way you demonstrate that you care about them is by asking questions around their particular situation. How can you serve? How can you add value? Okay. Now, if you want to set one appointment a day, which again is going to solve all your problems, a lot of them anyway, you have to role play constantly and consistently. You've heard me say, if you've been on a clubhouse or, you know, other places where I, uh, try to pour out and share and, and add value. People will listen to me and they'll pay me a kind compliment, which, you know, I appreciate it. Like, wow, you know, that's so good. Well, two things. One is you get rewarded in public for what you spend countless hours doing in private. Nobody was there with me while I was chanting scripts in my Crocs. Nobody was there with me as I was handwriting out the listing presentation, you know, daily. Nobody was there with me when I role play twice a day, six days a week. Guys, there's no security in this business. There is only opportunities. That's it. And if you want to get your, like, if you want to create security for you and your family, you have to get your skills to such a degree that if there is an opportunity, there's an 80 to 90% chance you'll be able to execute on it. According to the Association of Realtors, agents out of 100 listing presentations they go on, they'll only take 20 listings. That's pathetic. Because they're going in there and be like, oh my God, you have a puppy? I have a puppy. We should be best friends. Yay. You're trying to sell with personality instead of having skills. Like really think about how 
immature that is. I'm trying to go in and ask people to hire me to handle the largest asset that they own, 10, 15, $20,000 in commissions, and you, didn't, you don't even practice on a regular basis to ensure that that goes smoothly, efficiently, effectively for the client, not for you. And with less opportunities, guys, we have to skill up, period. You get more by becoming more. You don't get more by demanding more. So in many ways, this environment is perfect. I remember I, I had this vision. I was like, yeah, man, I want to sell 100 homes a year. I want to be one of the best to do this. So I was put in an environment that required me when 50% of all sales in Florida anyway, between 2008 and nine were foreclosures. And I didn't do any REOs or foreclosures. It put me in an environment where my skills had to be sharper. I had to be faster. I had to be quicker. So you can frame this in one or two ways, either like, why is this happening to me or how is this happening for me? What is this equipping me for? But you have to scale up, guys, period. And sitting and waiting and hoping that the marketplace changes anytime soon is an, is an, like, an unbelievable waste of time. Because realistically, what's causing what's happening, one of the main reasons is the cost of money's doubled. Somebody's payment went from 1700 to 3400 That dramatically shrinks the pool of prospective buyers. That's just it. And that's not going to change probably for another 12 to 18 months. Okay. And the other thing about this practice thing is we, okay, how many people drop in the chat if you want a 1% outcome? Just, just put 1% in the chat if you want a 1% outcome. What's up, Richard? What's up, Carlos? What's up, Mario? Vanessa? Ryan? Just drop in the chat you want a 1% outcome. All right. Well, here's what's cool about 1% outcomes. We drastically, the, we drastically underestimate the volume of activity that's required over the length of time that's required in order to produce the 1% outcome. So the, if you want a 1% outcome, I and mean, you're taking notes on this, write this formula down. It's V over T, volume over time. I will play twice a day, six days a week for three years. A lot of you guys can't keep your commitment to yourself for a month. There's a hundred, think about this. There are two in my marketplace, right? Uh, and that's shrinking by the minute, by the way. There are 20,000 agents in the multiple listing service. There's only a hundred that do more than 20 million in volume a year, myself included. There's 20,000 people competing for 100 jobs. If you want one of those 100 jobs, what does your schedule need to look like? Do you prospect for appointments? Do you come from a place of contribution? What does your practice schedule look like? Are you role-playing frequently and consistently and diligently and intentionally and purposefully to hone your skills? Because guys, I don't know if you noticed, like doctors have stethoscopes and syringes, plumbers have hammers and nails. What do we have, guys? Words. That's it. So I got to practice more and I need high level of practice with high feedback, right? So meaning like high volume, I do it every day, multiple times a day and really high feedback, direct feedback as you're doing it, right? So someone could be like, Hey, stop, do this, stop. Anybody besides me ever like played sports or an instrument or something like that? Yeah. If you had an instructor or teacher and they were a very good one, what would they do as you were doing it? They would stop you and correct you. Do it this way. Do it that way. So whether it's me or whether it's anybody else, get proximity to somebody who can provide you with that super high level of feedback so you can ramp the learning curve up. And get in an environment where you can get high volume of practice. Role play partners. I actually have a role play group. If that's something you're interested in, DM me. I can get you the information. Guarantees your role play partner five days a week. All you have to do is show up. We handle all the scheduling for you. But there really is no excuse. The resources are available to you. And by the way, people who partner with us, that resource is free. So quick question. Drop in the chat. If you role play five days a week without fail and you role play the listing presentation five days a week without fail.
Let me see. Who, who do we have? I see 100%. Five days a week. Bruno, of course you do. Bruno does like 400,000 in commissions. Three times a day. Jose, good, brother. And it's showing. It's improving. Richard, role play in the morning. Good. Thank you for your role, two role play groups. 100%, brother. My pleasure. Five days a week. Look, guys, success leaves clues. Okay. So this is a key phrase. Write this down. If you want to get paid like a professional, you need to practice like one. There's a reason why some actors make $20 million a movie and some make 500 bucks to sit in the back and stand there like this. The people who make 20 million, they can reliably perform every single time. They give a reliable performance every single time without fail. Could you reliably perform? Ask yourself a question. If I was kind of the coach and you were on the bench and there's a million dollar listing appointment, would I call you in to go on that appointment based on your practice schedule, based on your commitment to your skills? If the answer is no, we have work to do. Okay. So if you want to set one appointment a day, third thing, you got to prospect three or four hours a day. Whether that's on the phone, whether that's out on the field, whatever form of prospecting you're doing, three to four hours a day. Key phrase, a day not spent prospecting is a day you are not in business. Period. End of story. Like, do you honestly think, really think, okay, that you're going to do all the business that you want to do because your personality is so cool? Because let me let you in on a little secret. You're not that cool. Okay. Let me let you in on a little secret. You're not that cool. Yep, you needed to hear that twice. Okay. Do you really think that you're going to post pictures of you on the weekend and the food that you're eating and you're going to fucking make a million dollars a year? Is that what you think? You think people are just going to run up to you like, oh my God, Betty, that thing you have in your hair is amazing. Here's my million dollar listing. It's not a re that's not an accurate assessment of reality, guys. As a marketplace shifts, what we do doesn't change. How much of it we need to do and how we do it is what changes. So let's look at this logically. If we go from 6 million to 3.8 million, which there's a gap there. And if that means, and the cost of money is doubled, which means that there's less opportunities both on the buy and the sell side, what would the natural, drop in the chat what the natural response to that would be? Throw on the towel. <laughs> That's not your style, Emma. Come on. You're in the red? Yeah. Well, here's what I would suggest. The natural response is, I have to find more people who potentially need my help, which means I have to do what more? That dirty P word. Sorry, guys. I know you don't like it. I know you want to get strokes and accolades for it. Like, the prospect of today was so hard, Ewen. <laughs> Guys, this isn't hard. You get to stand in air conditioning and go blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Then I get to hop in my moving couch that fucking entertains me on the way. Then get out and go blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. They scribble on a sheet of paper and money shows up. Stop telling yourself this story that it's hard, bro. It's not. So whatever you were doing before that you called work, it needs to be elevated dramatically. Because if a marketplace is off, some of the coaching clients I have, 30, 40%, like volume has changed. They went from 25 closings in the first quarter last year to 12 this year. That's something that you notice. I have to, I have to up what I'm doing. I have to spend more time looking for the people that could use my help. And what I'm looking for is the following life events, death, divorce, job relocation, moving to assisted living facilities, retiring. Cause these people have to Jose, not like, Hey bro, I, I want to get a bigger backyard for my dog. No, not the market for you. Hey, William, if you could get me a million seven fifty, otherwise I'm not selling. Well, this isn't the fucking market for you. Death, divorce, job relocation, moving to assisted living facilities, retiring. 
downsizing, moving to be closer to the grandkids. These are all life events. And our skills will help us to determine where they are on the spectrum of motivation. In this marketplace, we don't want, only want to be dealing with eight, nines, and tens. You used to get away with dealing with five, sixes, and sevens. Because money was super fucking cheap. It's like going to the mall and everything's like free. <laughs> Cost of money was like 2%. It's like free. You have people making $100,000 buying five, $600,000 homes. How does that make sense? So I got to work. The days of eating, like the time, the season of easy money, it's gone. Say thank you for it. Thank you. I appreciate the easy money. It's no longer available. Now you got to work. Okay. So three or four hours a day. Not negotiable. Now, here's the second one. You guys aren't going to like this. Something called two-a-days. How many people played sports maybe when they were younger, high school? Anybody who played football? Yes, so I know you know that two-a-days means something to you. I played football in high school, and two-a-days meant you had to practice twice a day. Once in the morning when it was a little cooler in Florida, and then once at two or three o'clock in the afternoon when it's hot as shit and probably raining. You got to put on the sweaty stuff again, go out there, do it again. And you did that for like two months as part of conditioning. So this game is a commitment game. And what I mean by that is there's a story of the chicken and the pig. So if, depending on, you know, your dietary restrictions these days. Well, let's say you eat eggs and bacon for breakfast. So if we look at commitment, the egg was involved in you getting the eggs. They just had to lay an egg. The pig was committed. The pig had to die in order for you to get bacon. So the question is, how committed are you to the goals that you've set? This key phrase here, I don't stop when I'm tired. I stop when I'm done. I was on a coaching call yesterday with a client. This, the month that just passed, he had his, in April, his absolute best listing month on record in his whole career in 12 years. He listed seven homes in one month. Now, for some of you, that might be going backwards, but I'm pretty sure we'd all be happy with seven new listings right now, wouldn't we? Yeah, that'd be fucking dope. You know what his magic sauce was? I said, hey, bro, if you could tell me how you did that, then we can duplicate it. He's like, yeah, well, um, I made a commitment for the whole month that I prospected twice a day, every day, from 8 o'clock till 11.30, and then in the afternoon from 3 o'clock to 7.30, every day. And I prospected on Saturdays in the morning from 8 to 11. Ta-da! I said, hey, I'm curious, man. How much in commissions does that represent for you? $70,000. I see some eyebrows going up. Guys, I want you to put this in perspective. People actually go to work 360, well, let's say 340 days, 45 days a year because they get 15 days off for 40 hours a week to make 70,000 bucks. He had a part-time job, six hours a day, five days a week is 30 hours. Do you get benefits at a corporation for 30 hours? Nope. Because they consider that what? Part-time. And he made $70,000 in one month. Meanwhile, has interest rates changed? Has the market changed? Did it get magically better last month? In terms of his environment? No. What changed? He did. He got committed to his goals and objectives. So write that key phrase down. I don't stop when I'm tired. I stop when I'm done. If you make a commitment to set an appointment a day, I, I did a whole year of a particular training where it was about like keeping promises and I wanted to set an appointment a day. 
So if I had gone through my three hours and I didn't set an appointment, guess what? Guess what I'm doing in the afternoon? I got to set that appointment today. People ask me all the time. They're like, Aaron, how are you on all of these different social media platforms all at the same time, all at once? I can't get away from you. The truth is, is that I have a strategic partner that helps me with this. They're the folks over at EC Creative and they not only send me the ideas, they also do all the editing and posting. So what looks like it takes hundreds of hours per month to do is really only taking about eight hours per month. So if you're interested in finding out some more information about EC Creative, DM me the word social. And then the last thing that you need to do is to focus on the opportunity, not the obligation. Okay, so how many people besides me have ever found themselves where they feel like, so let's take like in oh, 3,000 plus, awesome. 500, good. 980, good, okay. Now, whatever that number is, double it because there's a buyer and a seller on each side. So let's say we choose the 2,400. Jose Harvin, in your marketplace, what's the average commission? Drop it in the chat. 8,000, 10,000? 10,000. Is that what it is? Jose, yeah, Jose said 10. So if there's 2,400 times two, that's 4,800. Everybody with me? Times 10,000. Jose, there's $48 million in commissions paid out every month in your market. That's the opportunity. $48 million, which means a half a billion a year, Jose. We think that there's a shortage of money on planet Earth. Guys, there's fucking not. At all. I just have to make myself more valuable. That's the opportunity. So how much of that do you want? I just want like 150 to 200K a month. Hello? Yes, I know. Hello? That's a big number for some of you. But here's my question. Who would notice 150 or 200K at a $48 million? Would anybody notice that? No, because it's a what? A drop in the what? Fuck it. It's going to go somewhere. It might as well go to me. I'm a good steward. I'll do good things with it. And I firmly believe, guys, I had this conversation with my wife. Like I was tucking my kids in and I was like, listen, it's my duty and obligation to make the most of this opportunity. They didn't ask to be brought into this world. It's my duty and obligation to have my shit together. I personally feel it's my duty and obligation to protect my family the most I can. And the way we do that in our current society is no longer with muscle. Because if that was the case, I would have a problem. The way we do that now is with what? Money. Because what money, what money really buys is freedom, opportunities, and choices. Money buys good health care for your children. Anybody's tried to set an, like a fucking health care appointment lately? Is that not like the biggest clusterfuck on planet Earth? They're like, yeah, you got to come in, pay us. And then we got to send it. We, but we need a referral. So we got to waste your time for fucking two hours. Then you got to go somewhere else. And then you got to pay us again. And bah, 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 right. That costs money. Good education for children costs what? Money. Experiences cost what? Money. So that's the opportunity, right? I don't get to do, I don't like have to do this shit. I get to do it. It's a fucking privilege. So I took a trip uh, to Haiti, which is the poorest country in the Western hemisphere. I took a uh, kind of mission trip there. And that dramatically changed my perspective on things. Cause I had seen kind of poverty, maybe like on, in magazines. It's something entirely different to see it nose to nose, beat to beat. I had never in my life seen a school with a 16 foot barbed wire fence that when you open up the gate, there's guards there with machine guns and the kids are just playing soccer, like nothing's wrong. I've never seen until then people wait in line for seven hours to get rice and beans and people with machine guns to make sure that they don't lose their shit. After that, when I came back here, people were like, oh, it's so hot. I'm like, no, it's not. You're just mildly inconvenienced. It's not difficult. That's the opportunity, guys. And my personal belief is that if I don't take full fucking advantage of this opportunity, 
I am being disrespectful for, to all the people that don't have it. So what we can do now, we have a few moments. Uh, we can open it up for some, a little bit of role play. So some common like objections that you're hearing to help. And my intention in doing this is to help you, you know, uh, perhaps get further along in the conversation. So either raise your hand and we'll call on you and then I'll unmute you and then uh, we'll do a little role play. You notice how all the hands fucking stay down? <laughs> Go ahead, Sylvia, let's do it. So, hey, Ryan, thanks for calling. Um, nobody's buying right now. Interest rates are too high. And if I was to sell, what would I do? I'm in a 3%. Yeah, it's a really good question. And I appreciate you asking. And to be honest with you, like I'm not entirely sure that it makes sense for you to sell right now. I'd be able to determine that by asking you some questions so, so we can determine what is important to you and timing and things of that nature. So I guess I'm wondering, um, you know, as far as selling this home is concerned, if you did sell the property, what would be the benefit to you personally? How would your guy's life improve? Because it is lovely. It's in a great area, you know, great schools. Well, you know, we want to get to our grandchildren, but, you know, with the high interest rates, um, we're waiting for them to come down. Okay. And let's say that we knew that if you made a decision to wait, which is perfectly fine, because we'll be here to help you when the time is right, that through no fault of your own or mine, it could end up affecting how much you can get for the sale of your home. In other words, you could get more now versus if you waited. Is that something that you would be okay with or would you want to move your timeline up? Well, the money, the most important thing is getting to our grandkids. But you know, interest rates. Yeah, I understand. And let's talk a little bit about that in terms of like getting to the grandkids. So let's say we sold it. So let's suspend interest rates for a moment, you know, and that sort of thing. Let's say we sold the home and you're with the grandkids. Ultimately, what is that going to do for you? So, Hill? Well, bring us happiness. We get to watch them grow up, spoil them. That's beautiful. And what I'm aware of, you know, I have children. I don't have grandchildren yet. That time happens really fast. So I guess my question to you is at this stage in your guy, guy's life, how valuable is that to be with them at that period in their life, that formative period in their life and really solidify that relationship? Well, it's very important. Okay. So being that that's the case, right? It really sounds as though um, it would make sense for us to get together and discuss the options. Because I don't know if you're aware of this. In the last four months, of, of this year, there's actually been in the multiple listing service, 8,000 transactions that have actually happened. Did you know that? No. Yeah. So people are buying and selling every single day. It's really just a question of figuring out, you know, what you and your family wants to accomplish and then coming up with a game plan to help you to get what you want, the time you want. So may I make a suggestion? Sure. Yeah. Well, based on what you've been kind of to share with me, I'm hearing a couple of things pretty clearly. Number one, you really value the relationship with your grandkids and it's super important for you to really maximize that because you know the one thing that you spend it that once you spend it you never ever get it back is time that's true the second thing i'm available a uh, second thing i'm aware of is that the more information that you can gather at this moment in terms of what you could get net net bottom line and things of that nature the better equipped you guys will be so you can make the decision that you feel is best when the time is right so what i'd like to do is this and i really wouldn't mind because i'm in your area all the time anyway i'd love to have the opportunity just to pop by take a look see what it has to offer while I am there, I will show you two things very clearly. Number one, what would be the most amount we could expect to receive and net net bottom line, what the proceeds would be for the property. If, and I'm very clear that that is an if, you did move forward with selling. The second thing I can show you is perhaps in the area where you're looking to go, what that would look like. And then at least this way, whatever you guys decide to do, whether it's sooner, later, me or somebody else, you'll have all the most important information you need so you can make the decision for you and your family if now's the right time to get closer to those grandkids. Does that sound fair? You know, that does sound fair, Aaron. Yeah, I figured as much. So if we were to connect under normal conditions, are you usually available in the evenings or the afternoons? Afternoons. Okay, and afternoons for you, is that like around three or a little bit later at six? Uh, how about four? Uh, let me check my schedule here. Yeah, I mean, it looks like I can make four work. So what I'll do is I'll pencil it in for that time. I'll have my assistant. Her name is Carla. She'll call you just to confirm, make sure that time still works for you. If something comes up, if we need to change it or move it around, we can always do that. Now, um, before we connect, I just have a couple super quick questions to ask, just to make sure that I'm fully prepared and I can provide you and your family the most accurate information and be the best assistance. And I'll be brief um, because I know your time is valuable. And then I go into prequel. Drop in the chat if that shit's fire, bro. <laughs> Did I mention at all that 
I sell 150 homes a year. Ma, ma, ma. And I'm the coolest guy on Facebook. Ha, ha, ha. Any of that? Nope. All about them. Level shift to grandkids. Yup. Because that's what's really what's valuable because people don't buy. Alma, we were just talking about this, weren't we? People don't buy products and services. What do they buy, Alma? Feelings and identities. Most people would want to have a conversation with him about, well, you know, interest rates. And I really think and blah, blah, blah. Like you're a fucking economist. Here's a news check. None of you guys get paid to be an economist. So stop trying to act like one. Asking questions, very little about me, very little about how I can help them, very little about the techniques that I use to sell homes. Make sense? I want you guys to get the underlying pattern. I got time for one more. By the way, all of you guys should be able to do this. On the spot, live, in front of everybody. Like, are you at a place, Justin, where I could tap you on the shoulder and be like, hey, bro, here's the situation. Go. Pretty close. Not quite that good. Okay. But I'm saying, but that's what we want to get to. Mm -hmm. At any time, in any place, I'm always ready. I tell people all the time, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. I need to stay sharp because I don't know when that, when that call is going to come in, when that conversation is going to be had. Good. We have time for one more. Aaron, my uh, dad's a realtor. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. And, and I certainly do appreciate that. And I want to be clear, you know, my job is it's to help here. It's never to try to talk you into doing anything. I guess I'm wondering because we have helped a lot of families where they have uh, someone in the family who has a license. And I don't know if this sounds ridiculous. Um, what we've done is, is we can help you with the actual sale of the property and then either reduce the professional fee like a referral fee for your dad. So he's like participating in the sale, either reduce it. So you guys net more money at the end, or we can pay him a referral fee. I mean, do you think that's something that you'd be open to? Uh, no, I mean, he's been in business for 15 plus years. Uh, he's taken care of all my family members that needed to buy and sell. So I think I'm, I'm in good hands right now. Yeah, I imagine you are. And really whatever decision you decide to make is perfectly fine. And I do find that, you know, when we're selling, of asset, which for many people is the largest asset that they own. It's really a business decision about who can help you net the most and do it quickly and efficiently. So as such, you know, it, it oftentimes makes sense just to get a second opinion, you know, just to make sure you're making the best decision as far as commission and marketing plan and strategy and things of that nature. Do you think that would be helpful or useful to you in any way? Um, I think I'd have to talk it over with the wife, but um, I, I would assume my dad would be pretty upset if I told him I'm meeting with another realtor. Yeah. And, you know, here's what I'm aware of, and I appreciate your authenticity. You know, I'm imagining that your dad ultimately just wants what's best for you, right? Correct. Yeah, even if what's best is perhaps just getting a second opinion, right? As that really wouldn't hurt anything. And I'm, I'm curious, too, about the move in terms of making it happen. How does your wife feel about selling the home? Is she excited about it? Yeah, she's super excited. Okay, so being that that's the case, if she knew that getting a second opinion perhaps could help you guys accomplish it in the time that you want and net what you want, do you think she'd really be opposed to spending 15, 20 minutes discussing it? Um, I don't think so. No. Okay. I don't think so, so just by you saying that demonstrates that we should get together and discuss the options. May I make a suggestion? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, based on what you've been kind of to share, I'm hearing a couple of things. The first one is, is that, you know, you, you're going to sell the property. It's not a question of if, it's just when and ultimately, you know, who would help you. The second, which I'm very sensitive to, I know you have, you know, your dad and I get that. It also sounds like the more information you can gather, the better equipped you'll be so you can make the decision that you feel is best. And whatever you decide, I'm going to support you 100% either way. So what I'd like to do is this, and I wouldn't mind. I'd love to have the opportunity to pop by and take a look, see what it has to offer. While I'm there, I'll show you two things. Number one, what would be top dollar in the current market? Because things have shifted and changed. Uh, number two, net net bottom line, what the proceeds would be that you could take with you to your next destination. We can discuss strategy, commission, kind of overall plan, our track record in your geographic area, because I don't know if your dad serves that specific area exclusively. And then at least this way, you'll have all the information you need to make sure you're making the best decision possible. Does that sound fair? That sounds fair. I figured it did. They ain't got no plan, no, no, but all the boys, they know, no, that's for sure, though. Are those blue and jeans you're wearing? Yeah, nah, bro, you know.
We just have to be able to, moment to moment, breath to breath, have those conversations. Now, that's a hard one. I almost stopped him when he asked it because, like, you know, I don't care how skilled you guys are. My sister's always going to list for property with me. You know what I mean? Like, for the most part. Now, but it made sense to continue to go through it because I have had that happen, just like that happened. We're initially like, no. And then, and then you say, yeah, you know, for us to review, like, like, like a strategy, commission. Once you start to talk about money, they're like, no, my best friend's an agent. You're like, yeah, we could talk about like, you know, strategy, commission. They're like, well, you know, business is business. Yeah, I can get a second opinion. I'm like, yeah, I thought you could. And then we just want to get in the door, right? And then in that instance, again, what would more likely not happen is I'd probably give the data referral fee if he decided that he wanted to work with me. Because I think that's a way of, uh, I think that's just good business practice. I've had that happen multiple times in my career, probably like 10 or 15 out of the 2,000 homes that we've sold. Love it. So that concludes uh, the portion of our conversation about um, how to set an appointment a day. And what we're going to do now is we're going to shift into having a conversation uh, about EXP, the model and the opportunity. If that's not something that you guys are interested in, it's perfectly cool. We love you anyway. We hope you got tremendous amounts of value and we look forward to adding value to you in the future. Um, if it is something that you're interested in, we're going to go ahead and get started right now. So let me put this into this mode. Let's go. This is if you want to book a call with me. If you want to have a conversation with me, you can take a picture of that. And, you know, we can do that. So why is EXP the fastest growing company of all time? Why have they gone from 20,000 agents in 2020 to 88,000 agents in 2023? Why are all these mega, mega producers, people like me, people like Sohil, people like Jose Luis Morales, people like Lard, people like all these individuals, why are they making this decision? What are they seeing that I'm not seeing? And I want you to write this down. One of the expense, most expensive things that you can own is a closed mind. Okay. What I'm aware of is that our eyes aren't what actually sees. Our brain is what sees. It uses our eyes as a mechanism to see. So if my mind is blind to the possibility, my eyes will be blind to the opportunity. I literally won't see it, even though it's in front of me. And I was a super hard no, guys, like fucking uh, no for a long time, a whole year, because I actually used to own part of an office. And I'm very appreciative for Jose because he kept, Pestering me and asking me and asking me, and, bro, you gotta look at this. You gotta look at this. You gotta look at this. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. You ain't shit. Nope, nope, nope. And I'm so glad that I did take the time. So if you've had somebody talk to you about it before, if they've exposed you to it before, I just want you to suspend whatever you think you know, because my experience is for people that are entrepreneurial, super hardworking, and enterprising. Once somebody explains it to you clearly and properly in a way that you understand, once you see it, you cannot unsee it. That was my experience. Okay, so here's the harsh reality for most realtors, right? They're not planning for financial freedom and independence. They're on a transaction treadmill, doing transactions to pay bills. They're also not being coached, they're winging it because they don't wanna spend money in order to get access to the information that they need to actually grow. I've met so many agents stuck at 10, 12, 15 transactions their whole career because they're not being coached. I personally have spent, I don't know, $400,000 and counting. I have three coaches in my life right now. One for business, one for social media, and one for my body. To imagine that I can do this without mentorship or without somebody help, that's like immature, right? At least in my experience. So I need a lot of help. And I see really big challenges. Me and, me and Sylvia, we see really big challenges in the real estate industry, okay? So why, why is this happening? Well, we have all lived through some major shifts, but we don't really realize it. Like I literally, guys, I had to explain to my son, who is 12, going on 13, what Blockbuster was the other day. He had no fucking idea. Didn't know. I remember walking into a Blockbuster and saying, hey, what do you guys think of like Redbox and like Netflix? And they were like, Man, everybody's always going to pay late fees. 
I actually used to work at Circuit City. I'm dating myself. I'm 42 years old. I used to work at Circuit City, which was a dope ass job because it was a commission based job, right? Where you had to sell like, uh, you know, electronics and then you had to sell the, um, the extended warranty plans. You got extra money for doing that. They don't exist anymore. They got wiped off the planet from Amazon. And that's exactly what's happening with traditional brokerages and EXP. Now, here's what's interesting, okay? What is the underlying technology? Drop in the chat what you think the underlying technology is that's disrupting all of these industries. Drop in the chat what you think it is. The internet, that's all right. It's the internet, that's what's disrupting it. And it's doing the same thing with brokerages, okay? Because here, I want everybody to think about this for a second. But between 2020 and 2021, did anybody go to the real estate office? Did it matter? No. So we were all doing this model for a full year. We just didn't call it that but we still had the expenses of the old way, okay? This is what the actual CEO of Blockbuster said, which didn't age well. He said this in 2008, neither Redbox nor Netflix are even on our radar screen in terms of competition. Is that not the height of hubris? They were the $5 billion gorilla in the room. Like, you're not even fucking, you're like a little gnat to us. Do you know that the CEO of Netflix tried to sell Netflix to, the C to Blockbuster? Not once, twice. Tracked him down at a ski lodge. You know how much he offered to sell Netflix for? $50 million. And the, and the CEO of Blockbuster laughed at him. There is now exactly one blockbuster left on planet Earth. It's in Alaska. If my mind is blind to the possibility, my eyes are blind to the opportunity. Could blockbuster have gobbled up Netflix and just took off? 100%. But it was hubris. They thought they knew. They thought they were right. Sometimes when people think that they're right, the only thing that can convince them otherwise is reality. Okay. I remember, guys, when I went on a trip with my family, when we wanted to stay somewhere, we only had two options at our disposal, a friend's house and a what? A hotel. Now we have this other option, Airbnb. Check this out. Airbnb has a larger valuation than Hilton Hotels, who actually owns the hotels. Does Airbnb own any hotels? Do they own any real estate? What's the underlying technology? Internet. Guys, it's happening right in front of us. We just don't think about it that way. It's not in our consciousness. Here's the traditional model of real estate. Okay? There was, there's a king or queen at the top. That king or queen at the top goes out and they sell a region for millions of dollars. That regional owner goes out and sells franchises, individual offices. Those individual owners of offices go out and recruit agents. Notice where agents are on this slide. The peasants. They do all the work. The money flows back up to the top. Do the agents ever own anything? Never. Like landlords and serfs. Landlord owns the land. The serfs work the land. And at the end of the serfs life, they got nothing. Check this out. I actually grossed $1 million in a calendar year. And you know what I got from my previous organization? A little piece of plastic and a pat on the back. This is what we've settled for in the past. Now that evolved into profit sharing. 
right? Where there's splits, there's a cap, people pay into it. And if there's any money left over, 50% goes to the owners, 50% goes to the agents who recruited agents. Fine. And that revolutionized things because that had never been available to people before, where agents actually have an opportunity to own something. The problem with that is it's based in the physical world and you got to get through $50,000 a month of expenses. So that means there's not that much profit and there's not that much profit to share. Okay. And eXp comes along. It's like, yo, there's got to be a better way to do this. So what they do is they have the brokerage in the cloud. Remember, what's the underlying technology that's disrupting everything? The internet. Because meanwhile, with offices, they got to beg, borrow, and fucking steal and give you meals just to have people show up to the damn offices. They're usually vacant and empty, and yet you're paying for them. So it eliminates all of this stuff. The region, the, the owner, the staff, and the agent becomes the owner and gets compensated like an owner. Okay, And what you get for it is lead generation, technology, training, health insurance, stock awards, revenue sharing, collaboration. Cool. So write this down. You are not going to get rich renting out your time. You must own equity. Period. End of story. You are not going to get rich renting out your time. You must own equity. Ask yourself a question. How many deals would I have to do where I'm currently at in order to become an owner in the company, the mothership company? Is it even possible? If not, you're just renting your time. So here's how this does. Here's how that works. The brokerage in the cloud eliminates monthly expenses, compensates you like an owner. Okay. Now, there's different forms of leverage, guys. Four forms, labor, capital, content, and code. So we don't live in a world of haves and have-nots. We don't live in a world of rich and poor. We live in a world of people who have leverage and people who don't, Alma. So I need to be clear, is the vehicle that I'm in, does it provide me with the leverage that I need in order to accomplish the goals and objectives that I have? Now, here's the innovation curve, and this is why I'm so excited about what's happening. So people are like, oh, it's too late. Nine out of 10 agents are not with the XP. But we've reached this point where enough people have done it where it feels safe. So if you look at this innovation curve, at the beginning is the innovators. People five or six years ago that were doing it like, yo, that's fucking crazy. You guys are nuts, right? That's like Elon Musk saying one day there's going to be all electric cars on the street. And everybody's like, yeah, that's nuts. He doesn't seem so nuts now. But those are the innovators, right? Then you get the early adopters. These are people who have a higher tolerance for risk. They jump in. Then you get the early majority, which they have a lower tolerance for risk. They need more people to do it in order for them to feel safe. And I believe that's what we've just reached. At 88,000 agents, enough agents have done it that now people realize like, okay, this is safe. Then you get the late majority. Those people have FOMO. They feel like they're missing out. And then you get the laggards. Laggards are people who still have flip phones. Okay. But check this out. Where is all of the growth, the majority of the growth between early majority and late majority? It's 68% of the growth. And that's where this opportunity is right now, at the beginning of that early majority. And check this out. If you are in the right vehicle with the right amount of momentum, you can accomplish more in three to five years than you could in a whole lifetime because of the momentum, because of the wave that you're riding. Okay. So what's your plan? You're going to sell real estate forever? You're going to be like this guy sitting in open houses? I've met people like that. You know, those conversations. Like, well, you know, I've been in real estate for 42 years. I'm like, okay. How is that a flex to me? What's my plan? What's my exit strategy? What's my offering? This comes from a book called The Cash Flow Quadrant. And all of us are somewhere on this uh, quadrant where these are ways that you can earn income. You can either be an employee, W2. You could be self-employed, which is what a lot of you guys are. You can be a business owner or you could be an investor. 95% of the population earns income on the left side, employee and self-employed. The 5% that earn it on this side, you get much better tax treatment. There's, it's much more leverage and you get much more freedom. The goal and objective is to get from the left to the right. 
That's the goal. Okay. And think about this. What's your I'm done number? I speak to a lot of people and, um, you know, they'll tell me these stupid numbers that are obnoxious, but they don't really think of, think them through. So how much money would you need in residual income in order to be like, I'm done, or I don't need to work for money anymore. I work just because I enjoy doing it. Okay. Is it 5,000 a month? $60,000 a year. I don't know about where you guys are on planet earth, but the $60,000 a year buy you much now? No, you would have to have $1.2 million invested at 5% to get $5,000 a month. Now keep this in mind, in order to get 1.2 million, you'd have to gross 2.4 million. Remember, you gotta pay taxes, store, save, and invest the money. Make sense? Is it 10,000 a month? I hear that number a lot. People throw that shit out, 10,000 a month. Great, $120,000 a year, $2.4 million in income. Not in income, I'm sorry, $2.4 million in invested money at 5%, which means you'd have to gross 4.8 million. Okay. And so on and so forth. So the way you can calculate this is what's my I'm done, I'm done number. Let's say your I'm done number is 10,000. So you need 2.4 million invested at 5% cash, actual cash money saved. Then you ask yourself, how much of that do I have so far? Then how much do I need to save per year in order to get to that goal in the time frame that I want? You want to get there in 10 years? You want to get there in 15 years? You want to get there in 20 years? How much am I going to have to save per year? And how many years will it take me to do that? Now, I don't know about you guys. What I'm very well aware of is time here on planet Earth is limited. You get 75, 27,550 days on planet Earth on average, about 75 years in the industrialized world. Women have a tendency to get a little bit more than men. That's what's average. I'm 42, so I've used half. What I'm interested in is, is there a vehicle that will allow me to get there faster? because it's a more leveraged opportunity. Okay. So this is for me. And again, this isn't, I'm not showing this to you to brag or boast. I want you to see what's possible, right? So I've been with the company for 11 months. In those 11 months, I've been responsible for 31 people coming to the company. Those 31 people have, have gone out and got this many. Look at RevShare this, this month in April, Alma. Look at that. In order to get that, I would have to invest, guys, $1.8 million at 5%. $1.8 million. That's exactly right. It's a platform. You see it. A lot of people don't. That's all brokerages are. They're just platforms to process transactions. That's what they're becoming. That's why it's higher up the opportunity ladder and that's why you can scale it to the moon. Okay, everybody's familiar with YouTube, right? Where YouTube says like, hey, if you keep people on our platforms, um, you have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. If you keep people watching our content, we will give you 50% of the revenue that we generate from your content. That's exactly what this is. That's what makes it this enormous opportunity. And the, uh, hey, in, in my previous experience, guys, where I was before, they had 130 agents. I'm going to be bigger than that whole thing in one year. It's unbelievable. This is a senior partner, Lars. He's now at 1,700. He sent me this slide like five months ago. Look at what he made in Ripshire last month. Yep, made Sohail smile. Unbelievable. Okay. Now, for a lot of you guys, what I'm also aware of is um, when I, I was with the company for 15 years, I left that company. You know how much money I left with when I left that company? A pat on the back and a hat and some plastic awards. So here, because it's a publicly traded company, they reward you with actual ownership in the company for doing transactions. So I'm going to share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. I've been with the company again, 11 months, doing deals just like I was doing before. I've been awarded. You see where it says uh, the 15 number? I've been awarded that amount in stock. I've also used 5% of my commissions to buy stock at a 10% discount. Guys, in one year, look how much equity 
in a stock that pays dividends because they are a profitable company because their model's in alignment with the way the world's going. I'm curious, at the end of your calendar year, do you get any ownership for doing your job? I do. I love those little awards where they give out like the little piece of plastic and all you guys are like, comes with nothing. I wanna be compensated like an owner. I think you do as well. So you have a choice, look, check it out. I can either attract 10 to 15 agents or I can save 4.8 to $72 million in the next 20 to 30 years. Which one seems more realistic? Okay, now what comes with partnership? Well, uh, because of the way the model's set up, we get to, you know, I believe that collaboration is a new currency. So this provides an insane level of collaboration. So some of you guys are on a call that I do. So 75% of all the coaching and training that I provide becomes free to our clients. Excuse me, free to our partners and anybody that we partner with. The only thing that's not free is the one-on-one coaching. But everything else becomes free to you and anybody that you bring into the company. So we do a, I do a group call once a week. Uh, that's an hour long with me personally, much like what we just did. And the question you ask yourself is if you were in that environment once a week, would that help you from a production perspective? I know the answer is emphatically yes. Agents pay $250 a month to be on that call and it becomes free to you. Okay. We also have a role play group, guarantees a role play partner five days a week, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Agents pay $1,000 a month, to, or excuse me, $1,000 a year to be uh, in those groups. They become free to you and anybody that you bring into the company. We also have free on, uh, online classes, scripts, things of that nature. I have two mastermind groups, one for making 250 to 500 a year. Actually three mastermind groups, one for making 250 to 500 a year. Agents pay $400 a month to be on that call. It becomes free to our partners and anybody that they partner with. Separate mastermind, which is a, uh, the Freedom Builders mastermind. You have to make $750,000 a year or more to be in that group. Once you fit the criteria, it becomes free to you. Agents pay to be in that group, okay? And then my wife runs a mastermind group specifically for the women in uh, our ecosystem. And uh, my wife's, you know, an incredible individual. She's sold all 2000 homes with me. She's processed them all. She's a systems kind of genius. And uh, yeah, she runs a call once a month. And that also is free to our partners and anybody that they partner with. What's also true is anybody that me and Sohail have proximity to, you would immediately have proximity to. So what does that look like? Well, our partner, Jose, I've coached him since he's 26. He's 35 now. He does $2.1 million a year in gross commission income. He owns 59 doors, 275,000 followers on TikTok, 45,000 on Instagram. He does a call once a week for an hour and it's free for our partners and anybody that they partner with. Would that be helpful to be able to talk to those types of people on a regular basis and not have to pay for it? 100%. Proximity is power, guys. Now, Jose also has a thing called Morales University that you can plug into. He's recorded me and him role playing. He's recorded live listening presentations. He gives you access to all of his systems and back end. Agents pay $400 a month for that. That's free. And then our senior partner, Lars. Uh, Lars was a top producing agent uh, with another company, 2.6 million in GCI. He was um, only worked in that business 50 days a year. So Lars is the king of scaling out. He has an online platform that he created via his coaching company, Real Estate B-School. I'm actually going to be teaching at their summit next week on social media. So be sure to check that out. Um, agents pay $900 a month to have access to that. That's also free to our partners and anybody that they partner with. So we've been super duper intentional about creating uh, a value stack that um, really equips you with everything that you need in order to get to whatever height you want to get to, because you're getting access to the multi, multi, multi millionaires in the space of real estate that combined, there's probably five or 6,000 transactions. And we can provide all of that to you for free without you having to pay for it because of the way the model's structured. Okay. So what I would propose or suggest to you, uh, I sent a post out today, which I think is very true, which is that uh, if I don't face what I fear, it becomes my limitation. If I don't face what I fear, it becomes my limitation. So if this is something after we've had this conversation, because one of two things happen, some people are like, holy smokes, like I had no idea. It's never been explained to me that clearly and concisely before. I love the value stack. I love what I get proximity to and the people I get proximity to and the other stuff is just a bonus. Like I'm ready to begin onboarding. If that is you and Sohail invited you to this call, reach out to him, text him, be like, yo, tell me next steps. 
Um, or if I invited you to the call, let me know. If somebody didn't invite you, I'm gonna drop in the chat uh, a link that you can use to uh, schedule a call for us to just have a, you know, just a call to have a conversation. It's not, there's no pressure, nothing like that. It's more like, hey, let's look at this together as a team to see if this is a match for you and your family and your business, really in that order, right? You, your family and your business, so. I feel like you're talking directly to me. It's a bunch of boxes here now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. Hey, um, when you let the truth free, you don't have to defend it. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. That was my experience. You know, Warren Buffett has a saying that says, like, there's only few things that you can sufficiently describe with words to a virgin. I have to be able to, like, right? I have to see it. And whatever, if I don't face my fears, they really do become my limitation. It's very true, right? So uh, here, let me, let me uh, grab this link. I'll drop it in the chat. My first calendar year of selling real estate. I'm... And then again, if Sohail invited you, reach out to him. There it goes, it's in the chat. So listen, this has been a productive use of my non-refundable precious breath. Sohail, thank you so kindly for putting this together. I hope everybody got a tremendous amount of value. Uh, that is the intention. My intention is to share with people in ways that are overly abundant, where they get made way more from me than anything that I get from them. And if you are considering this, guys, it would be a privilege and a pleasure to partner with you. It really would. And you would just know that you have partners in myself and Sohill and the rest of the organization and senior partners in the organization that are a thousand percent committed to your success uh, in this business. So appreciate you guys. Go be great. Look forward to connecting soon.